Martin, Martin Farr is the guy who's converted this from a Bronco kit. Um, and the torpedo system in it is, uh, is electric, obviously. And it works by uh, uh, having a small living polymer battery in the torpedo and switching it on so it's actually running and then you insert it into the torpedo tube and as the torpedo passes a magnetic switch it turns the torpedo off so all you have to do is uh, release it or push it along by radio control just a little lever just to push it past the magnet and as it pushes past the magnet it starts the torpedoes and off they run they're free running obviously um, on the front of this submarine there are two torpedo doors which when they're shut it prevents the actual torpedo from firing so that's a safety feature which uh, has been built into the model. So we're just going to run it round the lake again just to let you have another look at that. Right Martin's just um, setting the torpedoes up. Are there any Germans here? Um, and the lines itself up, ready to torpedo the poor old Corvette, so... Is the Corvette going to sink? I hope not, because <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> right, here we go then. Nicely weathered, 135th scale. And in the middle of the lake we've got a flower class Corvette, one of the typical sort of... Um, adversaries of the U-boats. Uh, they spent months out at sea protecting convoys. Uh, they're relatively heavily armed with depth charges and a uh, four-inch gun and uh, anti-submarine uh, radar uh, ASDIC. And if you ever see the cruel sea, that's exactly the vessel that they used in that film. Right, so I think we're just about ready now. So um, is everyone ready for this? Demonstration. Are we ready? Lining up. You want to go ahead a bit, Kev? There we go. There goes fire one and fire two. And we missed it. Well done. Okay, well that's the sort of thing that happens here. So we're going to get these torpedoes back and throw them back in the submarine. It's gone up the ramp. Can someone grab that wayward torpedo? Excellent. What's the right, Gil? Cheers. Have we got the other one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've got a limited running time, obviously, on these uh, LiPo batteries. I think we managed about five or six uh, torpedo runs yesterday. So we'll get, the, uh, get them set up and loaded back into the torpedo tubes and we'll give her another go. We've got Kelvin in charge of the uh, Corvette, so he's taken over as captain. He got away with it first time. So as a sitting duck, he's come back into the centre of the lake. Here we go again. And we're all loaded up, ready to go again. I'll be ready to go. Yeah. Martin, yes, he said. Okay. We'll get the boat uh, broadside on. So it gives him a bit more of a target, seeing as he, uh, he missed the first time. Forward a bit, Kelvin, please. There we go. Line up central. Here we go. One torpedo away. Two torpedoes. Okay. I think that's uh, successfully done away with our Corvette. That's one torpedo out of the two. We'll give it another go. I think we've got a dead torpedo in the centre of the lake, have we? What happens with these torpedoes when when the uh, nose cone hits the uh, side of the wall? Sometimes it uh, it jams and, and stops the motor running. So uh, it's a bit of a safety feature, which is not really designed but works. So that's what's happened to the torpedo in the middle. Yes, just in the middle. By uh, Royal Navy personnel and a lot of uh, trawlermen who uh, were very familiar with the single cylinder uh, reciprocating engine. Port torpedo tube only loaded. Into position. Ow! He's running. He said it too deep, didn't he? Run on, run deep. There we go.
Do that and work out your steps. Torpedo. Okay, well, that's about all we can do for the moment. Can we recover the other torpedo? And then we'll give you another go a bit later on during the day, yeah? Uh, thanks for watching.